Hey, it's Erin. Happy New Year. 2022 is the year for gains. So if you're looking to make amazing progress with your legs and your glutes, I've got a great video for you today. We're going to go over my top 10 favorite exercises for building mass in the legs and in the glutes. In this video, you'll see quite a few basic exercises, but with every basic exercise, I've added a twist or a slight variation to it to make it effective and at times a bit safer. So if you have existing knee issues or back issues, these variations can be a lot more effective for you and sustainable. So we want to train hard, but we also want to train safe so we can train every single day or almost every single day. This video is brought to you by Aaron Stern Fitness. So if you're looking for free workout programs, 90 day programs, or if you'd like to train with me year round, all of those options are available. I'll leave a link in the description below along with a 10% off coupon code. Without further ado, let's get in the gym and train. Our first exercise is excellent for overall leg and glute development. This is the hex bar deadlift. I chose this variation as opposed to the barbell deadlift because of how the weight is distributed. And you'll see how the weight is right underneath me. And this is going to help encourage proper form. If you have any knee or lower back issues, this variation is excellent. The barbell deadlift with the weight being in front of you can be a little bit tougher on the lower back and it can be harder to get form right. Now here, if you wanna hit the quads, you're gonna push your weight through your toes a bit more. If you wanna hit that posterior chain a bit more, you're gonna push your weight through your heels. And the hex bar is also gonna keep your upper body nice and tall. The second exercise that is excellent for overall leg and glute development is the goblet squat. I chose this variation as opposed to the barbell back squat because this is going to put you into proper squatting form. So if you've had issues with back squats, try the goblet squat. It's going to encourage you to keep your knees behind your toes, keep that upper body nice and tall. Here feet are slightly wider than shoulder width, pushing my weight through the heels. The elbows are gonna stay under that dumbbell and the dumbbell is going to be pressed against the clavicle. Really, really great squat variation. And this is going to, again, encourage proper form. Now with any squat, you wanna make sure that your knees follow the direction of your toes. So as you're squatting down and pushing up, make sure you're pushing those knees out. Let's move into a bit more of a specialized exercise. So this is a feet elevated Smith machine RDL. And of course I love my RDLs and my straight leg deadlifts for developing hamstrings. This particular variation I find to be highly effective for hitting those hamstrings. Now the Smith machine is going to take some of the stabilization out. So you don't have to worry about stabilizing the barbell as much. In addition to that, think about pulling against the bar. So you're not only finding resistance in gravity, but you can create resistance against the bar. So as you're bringing the bar down, think about hinging at the hip and pulling against the bar. So you think about pulling away. The elevation of the feet is going to give you a little bit more range of motion, so it's going to give you more of a stretch. Moving on to our next hamstring exercise. This is a leg curl using the balance pad. If you haven't used a balance pad before, really, really um, I want you to try this. So you're gonna place that pad right under your hip bone. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to almost round your lower back, tuck that pelvis under, go a little bit lighter than you would normally go and think about doing a nice pause rep at the top. So really get that squeeze, dorsiflex the feet. And what the balance pad does is it really forces you to use just the hamstrings. So you're gonna feel a squeeze like you have never felt before. So make sure that you're keeping your pelvis tucked throughout, especially as it gets difficult. So there's gonna be a need, or you're gonna want to 
uh, arch the back slightly to recruit other muscles, don't allow it. So keep that back a little bit rounded and really squeeze. Moving on to quads, we've got a hack squat and pushing the weight through the toes. So pushing the weight through the toes is really going to emphasize those quads. I've chosen a slightly narrow stance here, or actually a pretty narrow stance. So feet are together, pushing through the ball of the foot and go nice and slow on that negative. And then as you get to the top, squeeze those quads. So again, by really exaggerating this move, you're gonna feel it a lot more in the quads. So this is my one of my favorite exercises to hit quads effectively. So you're gonna keep your back against the pad and go nice and slow. And really get that good squeeze. One of the benefits to training quads is that you can look down and see your quads firing. So make sure you're watching, really getting that mind muscle connection, going nice and slow. Next exercise for quads, this is an isolation exercise. We've got a leg extension with an isometric toes in at the top. So you're gonna go a little bit lighter here and I want you to think about giving a really, really good squeeze at the top, turn your toes in for just a second at the top and then bring them back to perpendicular to the floor. Very, very important. You don't want your toes in throughout the entire exercise just at the top, give that nice isometric squeeze. And this variation is particularly effective for giving you that beautiful quad sweep. So again, take your time, turn the toes in at the top, squeeze, 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 turn them back, and then slowly bring the weight back to baseline. So, my second favorite exercise for creating curves and mass in the legs. Moving on to glutes, we've got barbell hip thrust, but we're doing one and a half reps. So if you haven't done one and a half reps before, I'm sorry, <laughs> this is going to hurt. <laughs> so with the hip thrust, you wanna make sure that your upper back is on the bench or on the box and that when you get into that bridge position, that your lower leg is perpendicular to the floor, you're tucking that chin, and with the one and a half reps, you're gonna go down, so you're gonna give full rep, squeeze at the top, go down halfway, squeeze at the top, and then all the way down. So you think about doing one full rep, one half rep, and that is one total rep when we're counting one and a half reps. So if you've got eight reps, for example, that is quite a bit of volume and that's really gonna get you to focus on that squeeze at the top. So all the way up, halfway down, all the way up, all the way down. And if you've been accustomed to just doing full reps, this one's gonna burn. Next exercise for glutes, this is a banded back hyper. So here you want the band to be attached to the machine and you wanna put it around your upper shoulders, not around your neck. This is gonna be a bit of a, a safer place to, to put it. And then what I want you to do is think about rounding your lower back, rounding your upper back at the top and really getting that good squeeze. So as you round your upper back at the top, Think about pushing your hip bones into the pad. So don't you think about tucking that pelvis. This is gonna give you a really great contraction. And what the band does is at the mid rep point, it's going to create the most resistance. So you're not only gonna get a really great contraction, you're gonna have the most resistance at the top. So this is quite different than just holding a dumbbell or doing body weight. 
we can't forget about the calves. <laughs> this is a banded Smith machine calf raise. Now here, I've got plates set up. Make sure your plates don't slide. So I, I do like the rubber plates because they're not going to slide. And I've got the band around the bottom of the Smith machine to create resistance across the front of the ankle. Because the goal here is to think about doing a calf raise, but instead of bringing your heels up, I want you to think about driving your heels forward towards your toes drive your heels forward against that band and that band is going to reinforce that cue and it's going to create a contraction that you may have not felt previously so if you feel like maybe your calves are a bit lacking this setup this particular exercise is highly effective now here i am not locking my knees out so i've got soft knee and I'm getting full extension at the top. That's really, really important. We're gonna hit those calves again. We're gonna do seated calf raise with isometric holds. Now, this one requires quite a bit of discipline. What I want you to do is at the bottom of the rep, so when you get that full stretch, I want you to hold it there for two to three seconds and then get full extension at the top. So I want you to think about really driving those heels forward at the top, squeeze for a count of three, and then all the way down full stretch, a count of two to three, and repeat. And what this does is it throws off, if <laughs> very scientific, is going to be very different than your traditional calf raise. So if you're used to just repping it out, this is very similar to how we walk and how we run. So these pause reps are going to be that much more effective for calf development. A few factors go into making great gains over time. The first is consistency. So you have to show up and put the work in. The second is that you want progressive overload. So you wanna to continue to challenge yourself increasing the volume over time, increasing weight, increasing complexity of exercises. These are just a few ways that we can continue to make progress. Another really great way to make progress is to come up with a rating system for your, the exercises that you do. So perhaps in your workout log, on a scale from one to 10, you can rate the exercises in order of effectiveness. So a 10 is knocking it out of the park, it's best exercise for that particular muscle or muscle group, and a one is eh, probably skip it and do something else. For example, for me, Back hypers, I absolutely love them. Now, reverse hypers, I just don't feel in my hamstrings and my glutes. I feel it more in my lower back and in my upper body. I feel like I'm probably hulking and stabilizing. So reverse hypers are not the exercise for me. That would be a one. Back hypers, especially those banded back hypers, would be a 10. So I have a rating system, and typically when programming my workouts, I want the exercises that are eight, nine, and tens on my scale because I know that they're gonna give me the best results possible. Always remember, as an individual, you are made up differently. So perhaps you have a long torso, short femurs, or vice versa. So exercises are going to feel different for you and me. So that's why it's really important to look at these variations and to rate them accordingly and to program only the ones that you feel are most effective. If you try these workouts and you love them, please tag me on social media. I really enjoy seeing you take the workouts and making them your own. That's it for this time. Until next time, train smart and train hard, y'all.